the author of the book, Open. He's a tennis player. His name is Andre Agassi. Good to see you. Come on. I asked him, are, are you sorry you wrote the book? You're not sorry you wrote the book. Sorry. It is very open. That's what it is. Hence the name. Very real. Congratulations. Good, Andre. Good to see you. Number one. I haven't seen you since that crazy night in Vegas. Do you remember at Club Pure? Oh, that was crazy. Yeah. Is that in the book? Uh, no. no. I haven't gone that far. That didn't make the cut. Thank, no. you. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. Did you think at some point, ah, I put a little too much in this book. It is as honest as... I'm an outsider, but for me, it's as honest as you could have been. Yeah, no, I don't think I put too much. I don't regret one part of it. Every word I labored over. Mm -hmm. You know, you know these stories in your life, uh, but the truth is, do you really understand what your story is? And I had to choose a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It's a reduction of my life, and I have to do it in a way where I can take people along for my full journey. And you talked to Brooke about it. You, your ex-wife, Brooke Shields, and, you, you know, I thought that was really interesting how you guys sort of pieced all that stuff together. Well, that, that was important. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I didn't want anything to come as a surprise. And also, too, it, it helps people kind of shake loose some of your memories. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we recalled a lot of the same things. Interpretations might have yeah, differed. Yeah, you saw them differently. Yeah. yeah. Andre, uh, the first thing I get out of the book, and I used to hear this, but it's absolutely true, is that you just hated playing tennis. Mm. From the time you were a little prodigy, you were very young when you were very good. Which makes a lot yeah. of people so sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I have a hate-love relationship mm -hmm. with tennis, not a love-hate. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I definitely, yeah. it was never my choice. Mm -hmm. Found myself in a life that uh, I really didn't want to be in, uh, that I wasn't connected to. Mm -hmm. you are with Beyonce. Chose it, chose it for, my first, for the first time when I was 27 years old. I was 141 in the world. I could have walked away. And I said, you know what, what if this is the first time I actually choose tennis? Millions of people go to a job they hate, but they find reason and meaning, and that's what I try to but do. But you don't think of someone who is a sports star as going to a job day after day that they hate. Yeah, I suppose it kind of flies in the face of perception, but it is the truth of me. You yeah. know, it might not be. And, 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 I, I'm sorry, and you were lonely, and mm. tennis made you more lonely. I think tennis is the loneliest sport in the world. I challenge anybody to, to, to give me one that's different, because in solitary confinement, you end up talking to yourself yeah. right it mm -hmm. leads to that how do you know any sport where you see people talking themselves yeah. as no, no, no. Tennis player? right yeah. right not even golf you're absolutely right you, and you, answering themselves you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you talked about the crystal math which i found fascinating when you you first did it with uh your with the guy and he said you know give it a try and you were like escape and then yesterday i heard ryan seacrest ask you did you ever play on it you're like if any you've ever done crystal math you don't play the day of the day before the day after you <laughs> no, can't it's, it's a horrifying drug that yeah. destroys not just lives but even communities and I have firsthand watch it destroy lives uh, it almost had its hooks in me I guess you could say in hindsight but uh, you know if that, to play on that I mean anything you do where you can stay up for an entire day um, mm -hmm. your heart's about to explode you you say, you say, say, excuse me yeah, two days of euphoria right? yeah you enjoyed the moment yeah. of yeah. escape yeah. well I did I enjoyed and, and that's the hard truth about drugs it yeah. does offer you something it appears to offer you something mm -hmm. shuts the voices mm -hmm. down numbs you a little bit all right the backlash mm -hmm. you've been hearing from a lot of players and ex-players some of whom support what you've done and a lot of them yeah. don't support what you've done what do you say to Marat Safin who says give, give your titles back well, listen, what I would say to that is, you know, 1997, I felt 141 in the world. My life was in ruins. I would love to take that entire year, and I'd love to box it up, and I'd love to put a bow on it, and I'd love to send it to him, and he can have the I whole year. Give it back. I don't understand. I, 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 I didn't understand either. I mean, I understand. It's not like you were doing performance-enhancing drugs. <laughs> yeah, and this was at the roughest time of my year. So I think anything I accomplished thereafter um, mm -hmm. arguably was uh, even harder Can, can to we do. talk about your father? Because if there's a key figure in this book, it's your father. Mm -hmm. He made you what you are, and he made you what you're not. Yeah. Yeah, he's formed a first formative person in my life, certainly many people's lives. And he's an intense man. He was, uh, you know, violent by nature in the sense that he was a boxer. He grew up fighting on the streets of Iran mostly. And, and he, he came to America, didn't speak a word of English, put himself through school, raised four kids, worked two jobs most of his life. So he was pretty hard on himself as well. Oh, carried, yeah. a, carried an axe handle in the car. Looking for looking for somebody to cut him off, right? Oh, well, wow. not not necessarily looking for it. But ready. Thinking 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 that the world's going to screw him today yeah. for sure, and he had to be ready for that. Yeah. You know, he would leave with salt and pepper in his jacket because you know he, he just he just fighting was the only thing. Wow. He, you know. he wanted to, to blind his opponent. And so well, you if being he's against somebody bigger than him. Yeah. Yeah. You you yeah. being a, an athlete and therefore I would assume competitive by nature. How are you with your kids? Are you completely different? Or? Well, in the ways that I really want to be like my father, I am because okay. there are things I, I love and really respect and I mean I love him certainly but 
you know, his, he has a fierce loyalty. He's a phenomenally generous person. Uh, and he's, he's just a good thing. Yeah, no question. But as it, as it relates to, to a parent, I try to make a decision. What, how do I define success for my child? How do I define success for me as a parent? And, and here, you hated tennis. You wound up married to a, a pretty good tennis player. <laughs> you know what I've ever right? played? <laughs> every, every now and then. Every now and One then. One of my but favorite parts of the book. Brooke. On the refrigerator. Oh, my God. Yeah. Brooke, what, it's something about the body that she always wanted, and it was like these legs, and it was a picture of Steffi when yeah. you guys were married. That just is so trippy. You know, sometimes the universe speaks to some people, yeah. and it yells to others. I, mean, that was, that was <laughs> I told my husband I'm not putting any hot girls on my fridge. Now, you, you talked to Brooke about the book. How does Steffi, how does your wife feel about There's a lot of Brooke in the book. How does Steffi feel about that? Well, she's not confused as to what my life has been, yeah. you know. And, and but sometimes to see, see yeah. it out there. She's, and, she's a strong lady, and, and mm -hmm. thank God she knows how the story ends. So. Okay. <laughs> you know what's amazing to me? Like, I look at you well. bald, and I think you, you look so great. You do. You look the very handsome. The fact that you even relied on that hair. I, by the way, FYI, I had no idea that it was fake. I mean, <laughs> I heard Howard Stern going, who didn't know? And I'm like, me. Oh, me I, I didn't know. People didn't know. I didn't know. Well, that was the idea. I mean, I think it's probably one of the greatest accomplishments in sports. Is me, <laughs> is me, is me hiding a, a, a fake mullet. All right, <laughs> how, about, how, about, how about your guy running all over Paris your, trying to find your Bobby? Brother. Bobby, Bobby your brother. Pins. Yeah, Bobby yeah. pins for your hair. Yeah, and I had it pinned down the the finals of the French Open because the thing was coming off. And How can you focus on your game well, when that, there are hair issues? I, I didn't. I, that's the last thing I cared about. You look I was so good. Yeah. <laughs> you, wait, you were focused on your hair, you said. Oh, yeah. Not yeah, the game. Hey, I pray, it was the only result yeah. I've ever prayed for in my life. Maybe that's so why you won all those matches. You weren't stressing out about the game. You were stressing out about the... Wow. But you were always stressing out about the games. I mean, that the, yeah. the psychology of playing is way bigger than the, the physical aspect. Of it's it. pretty intense. I mean, you're, it's again, it's lonely out there. You have to get across the finish line. You have to. You're measured against one other person. You know. But you're, you're so brilliant at something that you hated. Yeah. I, I find that hard to fathom. Yeah, Steve is too. He hates this job. I look at He's not that brilliant. <laughs> the truth is, I got I got much more successful after I learned to love it. Yeah. After yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to go back to Steffi or Stephanie, as yeah. you refer to her. She was always your number one position in life, even before you ever met her, and everybody else was a default. Is Wait, that a who is this man bothering her? But is that a fair thing to say? Uh, I, well, I respected her from a distance, and the closer you get, the more you, you love and Oh, where were you guys doing this? This was in the neighborhood. Yeah, somewhere here, yeah. She, um, yeah. it seems like you guys, and I, it sounds so geeky to say, but like it seems like your soulmates, you've like got our, this incredible past together yeah. that you both Love speak match. the same Sorry language. Sorry to use tennis yeah. words. Yeah. You both speak the same language yeah. and you both say, okay, and I like at the end when it was raining, you're like, okay, you ready to do this to get out on the court? That was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we certainly share a lot in common, and, but we're opposite in all the right ways too, you know. I mean, I think we all surround ourselves with people that we want to emulate or For people sure. that teach us. And, and that's one of the things, that people used to, you know, listen, you used to be a big target. Uh, and part of the target was that commercial image, you know, images, everything, but, but the entourage. And when I read the book, I understand. It's not an entourage in your case. It's not, look at me, I'm a big star. It's a lonely guy making family. Is that family. Yeah, accurate? Yeah, taking family on the road and trying to, and, and surrounding myself with teachers. I didn't have a formal education, but, I, you know, I hated school, but I loved learning, you know. I mean, I dropped out of ninth grade, but yet I'm spending all my time trying to transform public education. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, there's just these weird uh, contradictions. You have the academy in yourself. Oh, cool. and, you, know, you, know, man. you know what's really fascinating for me? Okay. I've certainly <laughs> followed your life and career. When you would read about going to the tennis academy, which always sounded like the most glamorous, uh, Boletari's place, glorious on earth for young kids to go play tennis. Glorified go, prison camp. Going to something <laughs> called the Bradenton Academy, which sounded like the, probably the best education you could possibly have. You were pretty much miserable in the middle of all of this. Yeah, for sure. You know, and then I went into my normal teenage rebellion, you know, being away from home with no parental you know, guidance, no, mm -hmm. no, no. Party on. Help. Yeah, but I was, it was like Lord of the Flies with tennis rackets out there. It was, <laughs> I mean, kids, it really was. And That's so, and then all of a sudden, you know, I, I succeed at it. I get out of it, but I'm on a world stage conducting my, again, teenage rebellions wow. except Wait, in the so world. Where did you find peace? When did the peace come? Uh, well, I fight for peace every day, and I can say I win most days now, but it's, it's something you have to, you have to fight for. It's not mm -hmm. an epiphany. Uh, you have to make a decision, and mm -hmm. you have to take those steps. Have you forgiven day. Jim Tarango yet? No. Okay. Uh, uh, Andre, <laughs> when you do, you'll have peace. <laughs> Andre, Andre will be selling no. copies of his book today at uh, Romans in Pasadena. Andre Agassi. Yes. Congratulations, it's, Christine. It's, it's, it's really a great really, read. Really, yeah. it really I'll get it back when I wrestle it from my husband. You know, usually when books are hyped and when you finally get the book, you realize you've read all the hype. No, no, there's it's a lot of this one. It's better than the hype. Okay. Well, uh, thanks.